The Protectors of the Wood podcast. The destruction of our planet is becoming real life. Remember that everyone can make a difference and every action counts. This podcast tells the story of misfit teenagers struggling to band together and help our world through this crisis. Episode number 57, The Plot Thickens. Sammy set Phoebe's turkey sandwich and glass of iced breakfast mixture tea on the counter. She decided to check out Sammy's new outdoor cafe and carried her sandwich and tea to an empty table on the sideline of her new soccer field. It was annoying that she would have to make the playing field a little thinner, but it was worth it to add spectators and a new and attractive atmosphere. The late afternoon sun was sinking behind her. The air was still even a bit stifling. A faint rumble of thunder sounded in the distance. Young couples ate and schmoozed happily. A car pulled up Stable Lane and a couple of girls from the Blue Demons jumped out and ran through the opening in the fence, arriving early for practice. They did not see Phoebe and were happy just to be outside together, passing the ball around. This is so nice. The little field, the players, the happy couples, the trees in the sky, they're all peaceful. All is right with the world. A large SUV drove up and out jumped two more girls. Hey, I think that's Shannon. Yes, wait, Shannon, tell your father to wait. The car started up, but slowed to a stop as Phoebe ran through the broken fence, waving. The passenger side window was down and Terrence leaned over from the driver's seat. Hey Phoebe, you looking for me? Terrence, I'm so glad to see you. Take a seat. He looked at her carefully. Is there some kind of trouble? As usual, Terrence wore a well-tailored suit, shirt, and tie. His dark skin and pale Panama hat looked very handsome. His whole bearing seemed impressive, even formidable. Well, yes, I need help. She quickly explained her situation, needing to see Mario as soon as possible and wanting respected witnesses at the concert. I was at the concert last night, but I didn't see anything that would attract the police. You don't live in Middletown, so you may not know that we've got a feud going on. Just in private with you, I'll admit, there are people who would like to close down the toy store and Sammy's coffee shop. But why? I think it's fair to say that A very wealthy group of investors want to buy up the town, take it over, and reshape it their own way. Don't quote me. Afraid of somebody? Don't quote me on that either. But is this the Morphe business? Ah, you're familiar with it. I don't know your line of work, but I get the feeling you understand the situation better than I do. I'm a lawyer, mainly in real estate. My clients are in Half Moon and down the river toward the city. But I hear things. I hear many things. It's a very small world. You know a lot then. You can see what we're up against. I can. I certainly can. Now, I'm a man who likes to act. And on my daughter's side, she's like you. So, what can I do? Find Mario. Explain the situation to him. And get him here tonight or tomorrow by, let's say, 3 p.m. 
ready to rent these backyards for the club. The fee will be minimal, maybe a dollar. And then you can attend the concert on Friday at 8 p.m. and help me watch for harassment and a possible frame up. You're serious? But how could you suspect your police chief of being part of this conspiracy? I'm sorry, I, I just can't believe it. Of course not. We're asking him to attend, to stand by the door. But there are more forces in the state than our township police. I see. Mm, okay. The big money and influence in the state capital? A higher level of police doing someone's bidding. It's all too believable. All right, I'll do it. I do want my daughter to play here. And I want those kids to have their little concert. You find a decent little thing and somebody just wants to smash it. Thank you, thank you. All right, let's go. Do your part and I'll do mine. Expect me by three tomorrow with Mario. Earlier if you can. My nerves are shot. Never fear where I'm involved. I get things done. PB jumped out of the SUV and it sprang forward with a roar. The girls and a few boys continued to arrive in cars and on bikes, on scooters and skateboards, walking and on the run. They came from Stable Lane. They came through the toy store. Phoebe had been forced inside more and more recently as the crowds in the store had increased, and it was a relief for her to be outside with the team. The Blue Demon's first preseason game was coming up in just two weeks. She knew it was time to get serious about positions and responsibilities. The time flew by. At 8.45, Luis came out and signaled Phoebe that Gilligan was closing. She pulled the team together and thanked everyone for a great practice and announced that Friday's practice would be canceled to make way for the concert. She knew the girls wanted to dress for the occasion and get their seats early. Everyone cheered. Sweat dripped from their shining faces. The group scattered in the shadows with high morale. As Phoebe headed for the back door of the toy store with a bag of equipment on her shoulder, someone took the bag from behind. Jeremy, what are you doing here? You should be practicing. We took a break. I came over to pick you up. How nice. Soon, Phoebe joined Jeremy in the cab of the tow truck high above Bridge Avenue. I need your help tonight on something. And I need yours. You go first. I don't know if you heard that George is staying with me. Yeah, Stephanie told me. It wasn't my idea. He argued with his parents late Tuesday after leaving us. He got so frustrated he just Put a few things in a backpack and walk to the gas station. How's Jim taking it? He said a couple of days would be okay. Anyway, George is staying on the couch in the office. It's not very convenient, and we're just struggling along. There's something a little strange about it all. I understand. We feel like a triangle. And when we start to clear it up, George moves in with you. Jeremy smiled in a sad sort of way. Yeah, that's what it means. Meanwhile, this concert's getting unbelievably tense. That's what I need your help on. Sammy and I have a security plan, and I've ended up with more than I can handle. We need a meeting tonight at your place with anyone who's around. Hopefully Eddie's brother and Stephanie, anyone who can help us. We can meet during a break or after you finish. 
But please, help me to get everyone together. No problem. But right now, there's only George and Eddie there. Jeremy let the tow truck just crawl along Main Street. Cars passed them quickly in the dark. He touched Phoebe's arm. I missed you. I'm glad. She leaned over and kissed him on the cheek. Hey, I've got to turn. He pulled into the gas station and parked alongside the garage. Then he embraced her and gave her a long kiss on the lips. He pulled back. We have to wait on that. I know. They jumped out and headed into the office. Even before opening the door, they could hear the music throbbing through the air. Coming inside, they saw George and Eddie playing close together in the open space by the door to the garage. The room was a mess. With clothes and books and papers and an unzipped half-full backpack strewn on the couch, they broke off the music and exchanged greetings. Jeremy picked up his guitar and played a chord. George finished it. We're gonna play it Friday. Capo up third fret. It goes C, E minor, F, F minor, C, E minor, G. Like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. They began playing. Phoebe cleared a space on the corner of the couch and sat down to think. She was tired and hungry and annoyed that Jeremy and George were ignoring her. And where were their other friends when she needed them? She wondered if Stephanie would be arriving after the coffee shop closed. After some thought, Phoebe moved to Jim's crowded desk and called the coffee shop. Coffee shop. How can I help you? Stephanie! Phoebe! I can hear you're there already. We've got to talk. Tonight, I'll be there in half an hour. Bring food. Anything. I'm starving. And these boys will probably be famished too. But I'm afraid to interrupt and ask them. They're revved up over this rehearsal. Got it. See you. Phoebe made a cup of tea from the hot water in the coffee pot. She let a little time go by, her mind drifting into dreamland. Then she noticed that George was sounding very irritable. No, no! Like this! I need to practice that. Let me just strum it for now to get the feel of it. They began the song again. No. The bridge goes F, A minor, C, and then F, A minor, D minor, G. Like this. Okay. Let's start again. Here we go. Jeremy, you're staying too long on the G. It goes right back into the verse. Come on. We only got one more day. Get it together. Oh, no. This is going too far. Jeremy's face looks like a ghost. He'll walk out in a minute. Ease up, George. Jeremy's never heard this song. Just sing it, play rhythm yourself a few times, and let Jeremy follow you. He'll get it. Uh, I don't know why I'm like this. I just want it to be perfect. Hey, 
don't worry about that. If we have fun, everyone else will do. You know I'm right. George stepped over and reached out one long arm to hug Eddie. You're totally right. My bad. Jeremy, let's start again. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. If I knew you really loved me there would be no more war And if we're not together In this wild and crazy world If I knew you really loved me It would set my heart aglow Take you with me Everywhere I go On a dark and rainy day Is this a dream or just a lie? One burst of sunshine Would light up my way I see the Thanks for listening to the Protectors of the Wood podcast. Find all our podcasts, songs, and projects on our website, protectorsofthewood.com. And to all the eco-warriors out there, remember that everyone can make a difference and every action counts.